Florida Congressman Greg Stube joins me now. So, Congressman, that looks pretty rough back there. Are you sure this was a good idea? Yeah, it's actually worse than uh, what you see behind me right now because I'm in northeast Sarasota County, so the eye is starting to make its way into this area of the state. But my heart goes out to my district, uh, southwest Florida and Charlotte County, because it is not going to look the same after this storm. Uh, we have people on uh, Little Gasparilla Island. We have 18-foot storm surge. We have winds of 155 miles an hour. Things that I haven't seen. I've been in this area my entire life. My family's been here for generations. I certainly haven't seen the devastation that we are seeing now, uh, certainly in Charlotte County and in, in North Fort Myers, which will be the epicenter of the hit. So uh, when we come back tomorrow and the sun comes up on the great district of uh, Florida, uh, it's going to be a lot of devastation, a lot of destruction that we're going to look at. Are you satisfied with the level of evacuation or did a lot of brave souls or maybe some knuckleheads decide to ride it out? You know, we have freedom in Florida. And, and as I like to say, we have freedom to to be not so smart. And <laughs> uh, there's 31 people. Char I talked to the Charlotte County Sheriff earlier today, and there's 31 people that stayed on Little Gasparilla Island, which is a small barrier island. And I thought to myself, why in the world would you do that with an 18-foot storm surge coming your way? Uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to see some catastrophic, uh, not only human tolls, but property tolls from this, this uh, storm. And uh, hey, people have the freedom to make the decision. Local government said to evacuate, especially from the barrier islands. Most people did uh, ag agree with that and move out. Uh, I had a lot of people even in the middle of the state that lived in fifth wheels or trailer homes or uh, mobile homes that decided to move north. And uh, that was a smart decision because we're seeing in North Sarasota County winds up to 100 miles an hour. Uh, and in where the center of the storms came through, obviously 104 to 150 mile an hour winds, which is a devastating wow. wind toll. And uh, it's going to take all assets on the ground. And uh, law enforcement and emergency services can't get back out till tomorrow. I know you guys have a ton of, of local and state assets pre positioned, ready to rock. Yes, How we do. How has the cooperation been with? the federal government, the Biden administration? You know, it's it's been surprising being a Republican and not ever getting answers from the Biden administration, uh, asking Secretary Mauricus uh, questions in the Judiciary Committee, and suddenly he calls me on my cell phone today asking if there's anything that I need, and we need the Coast Guard to come down to these places like Little Gasparilla Island to save these individuals that are stranded there once the conditions are safe enough to get our Coast Guard in there. Uh, so I have had people from the administration reach out to me. Um, I think that's going to continue. This is going to take a federal response, a state response, and county response. There's no way that the state of Florida uh, can, can be able to fund the type of uh, things that are going to need to be funded here. I've always already asked members of the Florida delegation, Mar like Maria diaz Ballard, who's on uh, appropriations for appropriations, disaster relief funding, uh, Kat Kamek, also a Florida Republican who's uh, the ranker on FEMA. Everybody's all hands on deck in the state of Florida as it re relates to uh, helping everybody that needs to be helped, and we're going to need it after this uh, storm rolls through and you see the devastation that's going to come from it. What's going on with restoring power, electricity, the cell service, some of the towers have been knocked out? What's yeah. the latest with communications? Uh, my cell service is down. Fortunately, I have a generator here, so I'm able to obviously talk to you and have Wi-Fi connectivity. So I can text through iPhone and that sort of thing, but cell phone towers are down. Uh, we have over a million Floridians that currently do not have power. And uh, law enforcement, EMS, and power companies cannot go out as long as the sustained winds are over 45 miles an hour, which is what we're experiencing right now. I bet it's, I bet it's 90 to 100 miles an hour right here in Sarasota County. Um, you're seeing that all throughout the state. So they're not going to probably be able to get out till early tomorrow morning uh, to be able to restore some of those things. But it's going to take a while. Just here on my property, we've got trees down everywhere. Uh, that's going to be the situation throughout the state. They have to send push crews through to be able to clear the roads, to be able to send those crews down. And some of the hardest hit areas, they may not have uh, power for weeks. Uh, cell phone connectivity may be also challenging, but all of those resources are staged throughout the state. We have power companies that are staged throughout the state and ready to respond as soon as the uh, uh, ability to, for them to be able to come out is available for them to do that. But I don't think that's going to be until tomorrow morning. We could have, we could have Floridians without power for weeks 
here in Southwest Florida. Oh, my God. All right. Well, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, we're thinking about you and all your people in your district down there. It looks like this is just the beginning. Yeah, I'd ask for the Americans to keep us in their prayers. Will do.